Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to perform the basic operations on your MS-43 ECU. We'll perform a boot mode backup, we'll do a flash and hopefully a bit of tuning using different softwares. This video is going to be shorter than usually but there's a ton of info in these. Unfortunately most YouTube videos are really long and a bit boring so I've decided to make this one. Most of the infos I've gathered are from the MS-4X Viki which is a really good place. They also have a Discord forum where you can uh, ask other members some questions. I've done that a lot so um, yeah go check that out. Pretty much everything you're going to need is a laptop with the correct softwares, the OBD cables, used for INPA and I made a specific grounding strap because for the boot mode backup we need to short the pin on the ECU. In case you haven't followed this project on my channel, well we need to flash the ECU because we swapped in an M52 B28TU and this car was originally M54 B22 powered. So right now we have an M52 in the car that is usually run on an MS42 ECU but I kept all the gear from the MS-43 ECU as the throttle body, intake tract, everything and that's why we need an MS-43 version for this ECU and originally there was never a version that came like this but also thanks to the MS-4X Viki we have a custom made definition file for this exact setup so great news. Also there's most definitely a ton of people in this topic that are a lot more experienced than I am I'm pretty new to all of this stuff but if you know something better than I do or I've said something wrong, which is possible, just leave it down in the comments and I'll pin the comments so that everybody can check it out. Before we're gonna jump into flashing the ECU, we first need to create the boot mode backup. But first, we also have to check another thing. Another thing that's really important is you don't want to ever program an ECU, read an ECU or do anything on the ECU with softwares if the battery is not hooked up to a battery charger. Now that that is checked off of the list, the reason why we have to do a boot mode backup before starting with anything is for one simple reason. Well, the ECU is divided in many different parts and I'm going to show a picture of it and I'm going to list it. You have the program code which is 384 kilobytes, the calibration database which is 64 kilobytes and a bootloader and UIF part which is 64 kilobytes. The latter part can only be accessed through boot mode. There are all the ECU specific keys, the EWS data, everything is stored. And before starting with anything, you want the backup of that in case anything goes wrong, because you can use that data to pretty much clone the ECU if you lose all the other data. So that's pretty much just a safety precaution. Also, another thing I didn't right away understand is you only do the boot mode backup once, and after that, you're gonna program through the OBD interface. So if you were to write an uh, full flash 5 and 12 kilobytes through the bootloader and the 5 and 12 kilobyte flash didn't include the keys well now they're permanently gone and they cannot be retrieved because you've literally erased them from the ECU and the space is just blank so you're only going to do the boot mode backup once and then you have your safety data just in case to access boot mode you need to short out a pin on the ECU to ground while it is actually starting to do that, you need to remove the ECU out of its metal shell. I'd recommend detaching the battery, then waiting 10 minutes and then taking the ECU out to your bench and removing the metal enclosure, hooking it back up and then hooking the battery back up. You don't want to break anything. This is just as a safety precaution. The pin we need to short out is right there. I'm going to put the picture on the screen right now so that you can see for yourselves. To short that pin, we're going to use my shorting cable and I'm going to take rounds right there. Now we're going to attach our cable towards the OBD interface in the car, but before that we need to check something. We are going to go into our device manager, go to ports, and then our COM1, go to the port settings, advanced, and then here we need to make sure that the latency timer is set to 16. This is just to make sure that there's no connectivity issues. Now our laptop is chilling inside of the car, it is connected through the OBD port and we have everything set up. This software is JM Garage Flasher and you can find all the download links on the MS4X Wiki. We are going to select MS42, MS43 boot mode, COM1, this depends on the COM port settings you have in the device manager, for me it's COM port 1. Next we're going to have to put the ECU into boot mode. To do that we have to short the pin and then turn the ignition to position 2 and then keep shorting the pin for around 10 seconds and then the coolant temp will go all the way to the red zone that way you know you're in boot mode and then you can remove the shorting pin do not leave it shorted because otherwise that's going to result in a corrupt or broken uh, read of the ECU 
Now I'm going to short the pin and then my personal assistant will get the key to ignition number two, so contact. As you can see, we're now into boot mode. The temperature gauge is all the way in the red zone, which means we've connected successfully. This is the first try and it worked right away, but you actually have to make sure that you get correct ground because oftentimes people report having to try it four or five times before it actually worked. Now we're gonna use the GM Garage flasher and connect. As you can see, the connection was successful. So now we can perform a full read. Now that we have a full read, it is displayed right there, we can go to save. And then we're gonna save this specific file onto our computer. I'd suggest doing multiple backups of it just in case something goes wrong. If you have a faulty tune, you'll always go back to this and you really, really need it in case something goes bad. Now it is saved and now we can just exit the software and then uh, take the key out. Now that our boot mode full read is done, we can actually disconnect our grounding cable and put the ECU back into its metal enclosure because I don't want to accidentally drop something on it and destroy it. I've already disconnected the battery, I'm just going to wait a few minutes to have any residual charge leave it and I'm going to disconnect all the connectors. I am now currently on the main page of the MS4X Viki. Now I'm gonna go here to the left, firmware files, and then I'm gonna choose our engine and ECU combination. So MS43, E46, and we have an M52 TUB B28 Euro 4 left-hand drive. This is it. And it's gonna start downloading once I click on it. So this is now a full 512 kilobyte file which we just downloaded. And now, theoretically, we should be able to write it. Now I'm gonna start up the MS4X flasher, which is also downloadable on their website. Now we can load our bin file. I still have the battery charger connected. And now we should be able to perform a full write. This can take anywhere between 30 and 120 seconds, if my research is correct. Now it says to finalize the flashing procedure, turn the key off, wait 10 seconds and then turn the key to position 1, position 2 actually, so off, 1, and then position 2, and everything is normal, nice. Now we should have successfully flashed our ECU. Now we're going to try to start the engine, small hint, it's not going to start. This is possible when you do a full write, it can cause the EWS to become desynchronized. Uh, usually that doesn't happen when you just do a partial write, so if you only want to go into the engine and uh, tune the rev limiter and I don't know, it's most definitely not going to happen. But when you are performing a full 5 and 12 kilobyte write, it can happen. So don't panic, I'm going to show you how to fix this. So first we're going to start up INPA, put the ignition on. Go to our trusty E46, so for me F4, then we go to engine, MS43 for M54. And now we have here shift plus F6, EWS3 start value synchronize. So uh, we're going to do that, shift F6, and then F1, EWS start value synchronize. So F1. Nice, worked. Press F10, just go back. Close everything, yes. Shut the key down. And now we're gonna try again after five seconds. Does it start? No, so we start panicking. Sometimes later, So now the car, while well, it finally runs, horribly, but uh, we have to investigate further. I'm gonna show you what I did in an instant. The issue was the EWS. Well, I tried syncing it because I thought that would be enough, but 
fortunately it didn't work so what I had to do was I went again to the MS4X wiki site and downloaded the community patch list, uh, the newest version with support for version 69 of MS43. Then I opened that version inside of Tuner Pro. The download uh, for Tuner Pro is also on the MS4X wiki site. And uh, then I've opened the bin I've downloaded for the MS43 B28 map open that and then there are several patches if you open it and I did uh, immobilizer bypass and then uh, remove checksum, uh, checksum bypass there it is uh, I applied both of these patches then performed a full flash of the ECU with the MS4X flasher this is the log um, full write and I then uh, flashed the patched version but outside of boot mode and now the car starts. So, this was a very brief and very bare bones introduction to the basics of MS-43 flashing. MS-42 is pretty similar and I'm gonna do that on my brother's car, the old Tweet 23i. Unfortunately, we're not gonna get to uh, tuning the ECU today because I still need to fix uh, the lumpy idle. I think it's due to either the wiring that's bad, throttle body issues, uh, but the thing is, I think it is the throttle body because when I check the values in INPA, uh, the degrees is the same, so uh, it should actually work, but uh, it's really weird. Uh, another thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to change the crankshaft position sensor because unfortunately uh, I mixed up the old one from the engine I got and uh, the new one I bought, so uh, I'm just going to change that and hope that it works. But um, yeah. There's no, uh, makes no sense to start tuning the ECU when the engine's not even running right. Well, the uh, rough idle is not related to the ECU, the issue lies somewhere else. First need to track that down. Until then, see ya!